Right, so it's been just over a month, or just around about a month since the last video. Now, a lot's changed since that video. Um, yesterday I added Synopsis support for ROM files. Um, I also made it now that all the Final Burn Legend ROMs are named correctly. Um, when Final Burn Legends 1.24 comes out, it will include all the name files and stuff, so all you would do is just FTP all the directories and XB files into the FBA directory in the underscore emulators folder. And when you scan them in, they'll all be named properly. Um, so that's it, synopsis. So I include a couple of files in text files. Now these files came with all the individual emulators and I had to amend some of them. Uh, the reason being is the way I do the, the static menus, there's a downside. You can't use Amberson signs, or that's it's Amberson, I can't remember how you pronounce it, or how it's pronounced. Uh, the and sign, the, the and sign. Uh, generally, you can't use that in XML, but obviously, XBMC isn't using correct XML. Um, so, with this. The, how I do the static menu, you have to change them. So basically, if there's a system, so for instance, um, Commodore 64, so if that is synopsis, a synopsis folder, and then there it has a couple of thousand text files or whatever, you would open all of them up in Notepad++. So select all, control A, and drag them into Notepad++. Wait for them to load, and then you would press control H. You would type in the search, Box, you would type the and sign, and in the replace box, you would put and sign AMP semicolon, and then you would pick replace not open documents. And that's it. Fixed. Now, you'll also have to search for the less than symbol or the back arrow, as I call it. Um, again, the way I do the static menu XBMC thinks that's an escape character thing, so basically thinks it's at the end of whatever tag, so if I used an image tag for instance, it would think the image tag is closed and it would be malformed and it won't load it. So you have to change them to something else. Um, I just changed them to less than. So that's, you know, if any show up in the synopsis information, it just shows up as uh, less than or less than something. I can't remember exactly what I put it as. But that's the only two things you have to change in the synopsis text files. Um, but, you know, for the most part, nobody would ever notice anyway, because it's only generally used for maybe a cheat or something stupid, like open bracket, close bracket kind of thing. Um, but as you can see, synopsis all works, super smooth, super quick, just works. And that's all scanned in when you scan the ROMs. So, and go to other settings and they're renamed to auto scan ROMs and update selected systems. So if I'd like to say I added more ROMs to uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color, you just select NGPC and it will scan them in. And if they've got synopsis, so I'll pass the synopsis. Uh, the synopsis is put in the underscore synopsis folder and then whatever the system is, so SNES, Mega Drive, Genesis, whatever. Um, other changes are back end changes. Uh, I've also added custom emulator and ROM paths. So you can move the underscore ROMs or the underscore emulator directory to another partition. In this case, mine's on the F partition because there's like nearly 100 gigs worth of ROMs. Oh. I think it's like 70, 80 gig, something like that. Oh no, it's not that much. I'm not talking. That's including my games. Um, it's about 40 odd gig. Um, but it's too big for the E partition. My dashboard's on E uh, because it boots quicker. Uh, generate cache firms. I changed that script to only do homebrew and Xbox games because the way the static menus are done, the thumbnails are loaded directly, so there's no need. Uh, layouts are created on the fly, so you don't need to refresh them anymore. Uh, the auto scan will create all the cut files, it will create the 
content lists as I call them for each emulator. Excuse me, it will also create the synopsis information stuff if it finds a synopsis file for a specific ROM. Uh, UI settings you've now got default, synopsis and thumb view. Uh, thumb view is the one I like because you get a nice big thumbnail. Uh, left and right on the D-pad now cycles up and down pages. So you can cycle up and down quick using left and right. This is handy if you use an arcade stick. Uh, put it back to synopsis. Intro, I can't remember if I did an intro in the last video, but you can select an intro. XMV, WMV, MP4, and there might be another one, I can't remember if I added MPG or AVI, but the first three are supported definitely. Home screen customization's changed, um, it's just simpler to see. You can go in and configure it, uh, change the theme, uh, the textures have been updated, the home menu.xml has been updated, or the home screen has been updated, I've redone that. Um, I wish I'd done that originally because well, it wasn't a pain in the backside, but it's something I ended up just doing anyway, and I couldn't even do other stuff. So that's redone. Uh, if anybody's created textures in like that, nothing's changed in your end. It'll just all work. It's just it's placed properly and stuff like that now. Uh, colors. Oh, actually, yeah, a minute. So there you go. Set to red because then you can see it better on the video. Um, now with the carbon theme I redone all the controller images. Now they're resized properly, they're created properly. Now I converted the SVG files to PNG but I've done it using Image Magic Converter. It's a command line tool. Um, good thing about it is when you convert the SVG files to the proper size, they look lovely. They look crystal clear, nice and clean. Uh, better than what Photoshop does. Photoshop seems to butcher them when you resize them. So as you can see up the top right there, you've got a nice clean smaller image. Whereas Photoshop would butcher it. Same with the control pad there, it's nice and clean. And when you go into this, it's nice and clean. A lot better than what it used to look like. I um, also redone my Xbox control pad. So now that's a lot cleaner looking. I uh, also com converted it to SVG file. Uh, I created it in Photoshop and then converted it to SVG. So anybody can use it now. Well, they can't because I've got it on my computer but I may end up putting it on GitHub. Uh, what else? Uh, back end changes. Uh, you can have start up playlist now. Um, basic looks for E music, F music, G music, and it uses a Python script and it will create a playlist for you called random.m3u. And you select that, and on next startup, just restart, soft in game reset, I will then play music. And as you can see, you just get the music view that I have with my XBMC for kids. Um, if you have an intro, it will play the music after the intro. It's finished. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, some of the scripts have been optimised. The scan scripts have been optimised. The look for creating cut files has been optimised. It's faster now. It scans nearly 4,000 ROMs in maybe like a few minutes. Not long. Um, that's creating, like I said, the content lists for each emulator and stuff like that, which is used to build the menu. Um, as you can see up the top left, when you press A, I do the wee spinning indicator, which is that busy icon, which lets you know that it's working, it's doing its thing. Uh, as you see, it's also themable, so it's the same colour. So when using the carbon theme, it matches the carbon theme colour. Uh, when using the default theme, it's blue. Uh, there's other changes. I mean, there's the main kind of one is synopsis. Me up, updating the scripts and stuff like that, getting them faster, working better. Uh, I'll show you an emulator running. 
So let's get into Mario. Super Mario, Super Super Mario. So let's see, Super Mario World. Make, I did make a script that ran which basically allowed you to go so when you loaded the game when you exited that game it would take you back into whatever emulator list you were last in so you know as an example it's like you know if you pressed in coin ops I think you can press start and back I think it is I can't remember what number one it is and it will take you back to the wrong list. Um, I did that, but I removed it because currently the way I changed how the loading of the there we go. Um, I changed how I was doing. I changed how the scripts and that worked. Um, what I done was I didn't create cut files, and it worked fine. But the way I'm currently doing it, it makes it more difficult to run a script. Well, it doesn't actually. I could make it run that script first and then run another script. So I could do it, it's just I haven't done it. I might add it in as a toggle. Um, but right now it's not added. So, oh, another thing. I skinned all the emulators that I supply. So now you've got a nice menu that is uniform and readable. <laughs> Prior it wasn't. Um, so every emulator is the same menu system. It all looks the same, functions the same. So yeah, uh, all the emulators have skins, which it's just white text, uh, readable on a black background. That's all you need because you won't be using the emulator in the normal way. Uh, ROM scan is quicker, synopsis support, uh, new textures, uh, updated XML files, um, slight minor changes to the UI. Uh, Proper names for Final Burn Legend ROMs, like all every single ROM. Um, what else? God, basically just check GitHub. On GitHub is all the changes. Um, you can just check the check the commit list history, and every time I commit something, unless I forget something, there'll be something that says no comment. But generally that's just because I forgot to change one something or something. It was like yesterday I forgot to, when I committed the changes for synopsis and stuff like that. It didn't change, it didn't commit the bloody change log. So I ended up having to commit that after. So that didn't, I think I put a reply to that one actually. But generally if there's no commit, no comment, then it's usually just been a mistake at my part and I've fixed it quickly. So, I'll leave it at that, uh, download it, try it out, it should be simple enough to use, um, by the time this video goes up, the readme will be updated slightly, um, on GitHub, so, but, yeah, hopefully, if you use it, uh, you find it useful, uh, let's say it's just a pet project I do, uh, I enjoy doing it, um, Layouts I've tried to make as simple as possible for theming. Uh, if you create a new theme, you have to create a theme directory. So if you look at the underscore layouts default directory, inside that you have a readme, which is outdated. I'll need to fix that. But you have a skin default and a carbon theme. So if you create a new theme, so if you create new textures, new images and stuff like that, or you have new backgrounds, whatever, Whatever you name that theme, you will need to put a folder in there. So, as an example, we'll make a theme called... Uh, God, I don't know. Uh, Arcade. So we made a theme called Arcade. You would create a folder called Arcade, and then you would need free layout files. So you'd need a layout.xml, a synopsis underscore layout.xml, and a thumb underscore layout.xml. 
can just copy them from the default, the skin default folder, and then modify them to however you want. Um, the default skin one should use backgrounds and stuff like that with the theme you create, so you might not even need to modify them. But the way the script works is you have to have a new layout, you have to have layouts for themes. Um, like I said, it's just as simple as copying three files into a folder, so it's, it's, it's no difficult. Um, so you, if you released a theme, you'd have a texture, so you'd have an arcade.xpr for instance, and a layouts folder with three files in it. Um, I might at a later date update the script to check, and if it doesn't find it, I'll just use the default one, but as of right now, just copy the free files and we're done with it. Um, but anyway, I'm off, so just watch.